On the surface, the concept of injection molding may seem fairly simple. Clamp two blocks of metal together, fill them with plastic, and you have a finished part. But as we all know, building an injection mold is a bit more complicated than that. And one specific area that is often overlooked, but extremely important, is the type of steel that is used for different components of a mold. What may seem like a simple decision can actually have major impacts on the longevity of a mold, the quality of a finished part, how quick the mold is able to produce that part and ultimately how much the project costs as a whole. So today let's go over some of the most common types of tooling steels that are used in injection molding, the pros and cons of each, and why it is so important to work with an experienced toolmaker to help guide you through these important decisions. So before we choose the right type of steel for a given project, there's a few factors that we want to consider. First is the hardness of a given steel. In our industry, we use what's called the Rockwell scale to measure hardness, with softer prototype molds being around 20 to 30 Rockwell, also known as HRC, and high volume, fully hardened production quality molds being 50 to 60 Rockwell. Obviously, these numbers can vary quite a bit, which we'll talk about next, but it's important to note that while a harder steel is generally more resistant to wear, it can also be more brittle, which is why strategically deciding which mold components are harder than others can have a big impact on the overall cost and required maintenance over the life of that mold. Just as it's known that only diamond will cut diamonds, two mold components of the same hardness will wear each other down. And that's why having a good Rockwell spread between mating components and strategically making easier to replace mold components out of softer steel can pay dividends down the road when mold components inevitably need to be maintained. Another thing worth considering is the corrosion resistance of different types of steel, depending on the type of resin that will run in that mold. A high corrosion resistance is crucial for resins like PVC or glass filled nylon, where again, the wrong choice of steel could increase maintenance costs down the road. Stainless steel, for example, is often touted as the best option in terms of corrosion resistance, but it can be more brittle after hardening, which again, we'll talk more about in a second. Other considerations would be the thermal conductivity of the tool, which can impact the cycle time during production. And there are many other considerations, including the machinability and polishability of the steel, the cost and longevity, which is why working with an experienced toolmaker is crucial to choose the right steel for your application without spending more than necessary. But now let's discuss some common types of steel specifically. One of the most common types of steel used in injection molding is P20 steel, which is a pre-hardened material used for low to medium volume productions with a Rockwell hardness around 30 to 40, making it a fantastic middle of the road choice for general purpose mold components with good tough while still being easily machined and polished. It is worth pointing out that again, these Rockwell values can vary and with many plating and coating options, sometimes the right material and hardness is a combination of the base metal and a renewable coating. P20 has decent corrosion resistance, but you may see a modified version known as 718 steel that has similar characteristics, but better corrosion resistance. Moving up the Rockwell hardness scale, you'll find H13, which is ideal for for high temperature applications, since it is very resistant to thermal fatigue, which can help reduce cycle times. H13 will generally fall in the 45 to 55 range on the Rockwell hardness scale, making it a fantastic choice for high volume applications that require high wear resistance. S7 would be slightly higher on the Rockwell scale, but it's a great choice for side actions or inserts since it's more shock resistant, meaning it's less susceptible to cracking. Lastly would be different types of stainless steel, like 420 stainless steel, which are more corrosion resistant and have a high degree of polishability, making them a popular choice for medical grade components or transparent parts. But as we talked about, corrosion resistance is only one consideration. And like I said, stainless steel is more brittle after hardening, meaning it isn't always the best choice for certain mold components. Obviously, there are other types of steel that are used for different applications, but it's important to remember that this is not usually a single decision. Most molds will involve components made of different types of steel, again, in an effort to control which parts of the mold wear down faster and can be more easily replaced if needed. You may also hear of aluminum molds, which are often used in prototype applications and can be a good solution for low volume productions. But the issue with aluminum is that it wears down very quickly, thus requiring costly replacement parts or for a fully hardened steel tool to be made eventually anyway. 
Aluminum also has different thermal properties and finishes from steel, meaning a prototype from an aluminum mold will likely have different characteristics than a finished part from a fully hardened production quality tool. P20 is a great alternative since it will perform more like a production quality tool with a very negligible difference in price over aluminum, but we also understand that not every application is ready to commit to a fully hardened production quality tool, which is why Crescent offers alternative options like mud units or our proprietary master action frames, which utilize a common base that houses many of those costly mold components where a more cost-effective fully hardened insert can simply be placed into that frame in order to produce a finished part. We found this to be a fantastic way to offer our customers a fully hardened mold in cases where they may otherwise opt for a low quality aluminum tool. Which brings us to some of the most common mistakes when choosing a steel and how to avoid them. First is choosing a low cost steel in order to save money up front that will eventually wear down too quickly and need to be maintained or replaced. It's no secret in our industry that producing an injection mold is a large upfront cost, but choosing the the right steel from the start can allow the mold to last longer, limit maintenance costs down the road, and perhaps most importantly, optimize the cycle time, ensuring that once that mold is in an injection molding press producing parts, it's producing them as quickly as possible. On the flip side of that coin, however, an experienced mold maker can help you find where that line is so that you're also not choosing a costly steel that is unnecessary for a given application. Similarly, another common mistake is ignoring corrosion resistance requirements or thermal conductivity for a given project. Again, certain steel decisions might save money up front, but the wrong thermal conductivity could mean longer cycle times and a lack of corrosion resistance for the type of resin being used could lead to increased maintenance costs down the road. As you can probably tell at this point, an injection mold is much more complicated than two pieces of steel being clamped together. So as I've said, working with an experienced tool maker who can help guide you through this decision-making process and make informed recommendations on different types of steel for different mold components is crucial for the long-term success of an injection molding project. So if you have any specific questions about the best type of steel for your injection molding project, then be sure to reach out to us using the contact information down below and learn how we can help bring your injection molded part to life.